C and and uh, I believe that um, uh, is this Amy Lyons or uh, Amy Elizabeth? Can you respond to me? Um, we're going to continue. Uh, this is from uh, this is from Amy Lyons. All right, thank you, Amy. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred and let him uh, begin uh, the session uh, uh, tonight. The title of the message tonight is "Cost of the Higher Vision," and we're going to see how to have a higher vision and what it would cost. Uh, are you envisioning? operating in a higher realm of anointing and gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said in Luke 14, 28, uh, don't try to follow me without considering the cost. It's important. Mm -hmm. There are costs. And we can't get to the higher vision if we're focused on natural things because it's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit to move us to a higher level. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. And just introducing this concept of a higher vision. Uh, I want to start first with uh, uh, Noah, who was given a vision to build a, an ark, a ship, uh, a ship without a rudder, a ship mm -hmm. without a, any way of steering it, that you depended on the Lord. Um, Noah had to depend totally on the Lord. And they built this uh, when he was about 40, 480 years old. Uh, he and his wife had been playing around and they didn't have any children and God told him to have to build this humongous <laughs> ship. And so all, all of a sudden they got busy and they started having children about the time he was 500. Oh my uh, goodness. And uh, uh, they had three sons and uh, those sons then uh, probably helped him build the ark. And the, the thing I wanted to point out about the ark, and because this is a higher vision we're talking about tonight, uh, the ark had, uh, it, was, it was a long ship, and uh, it had three layers in it, or three decks, and each deck was about 15 feet high, and there were, the, the windows were only in the top deck, at the top of the top deck, and you couldn't see those windows, uh, through see out the window, uh, by standing on the floor of the top deck, the only thing you could do was to look up, look up to God. So all Noah could do mm -hmm. to see anything, he could only look up. He couldn't look out uh, and see how many people were mad at him, because I imagine there were a lot of people <laughs> when it started raining, there were probably lots of people gathered around and they were mad at him, wanting to be in there. But you know, <laughs> Noah didn't shut the door. It was uh, it was God that shut the door. And uh, uh, he couldn't look out and see the people. He couldn't look out and see the ground. He couldn't see how much water was on the ground. The only thing Noah could see was a higher vision. And I think that's important for all of us. We need to be looking up to God. To mm -hmm. see a higher vision, uh, we need to be like Noah and look up to God. We know that God has a good plan for us from Jeremiah 29 11, a good plan yes, for know. the future. We also know from Ephesians 2.10 uh, that he has prepared works for us. For each one of you, he, God prepared something to do before he created this earth and before he created the world. That's imp important and it's impressive to me that God knew each of us and he prepared things for us to do. So that's that's part of the plan. And that's he has a plan for you. It's a good plan. Uh, and we need to know what it is. We need to know his plan. Amen. See, it's easy to look out around us and, and come up with our own plan, our own vision. But what I'm talking about today is a higher vision. It's not something uh, that we can look at our circumstances and formulate how to how to get and reach the higher level that God has for us. It's not on that basis. Uh, regardless, if we're just starting in the natural realm, or regardless of what we do with our behavior, we can never get to the highest level. Uh, and so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about how, uh, what the costs are. The real core of the message tonight is 
from 2 Kings chapter 6, and it's about Elisha and his servant. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's really interesting to me is that both of them were in the same circumstances, but they looked at the circumstances differently. And that's what I want to do. I want to be like Elisha. Elisha had a higher vision than his servant. And so let me tell you the background then in 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, there was a, a king of Aram, uh, who we know today is the nation of Syria. And so I'll just say the Syrians then. So the king of uh, Syria kept sending in raiding parties into Israel. Um, he wanted to steal and kill. <laughs> that sounded like the devil. Yeah. Steal and kill and destroy. And uh, but he'd send these raiding bands into Israel, and there would be nobody around that they could uh, uh, kill and steal from. And the reason was uh, there was a prophet uh, in the land, and his name was Elisha. And Elisha knew what the king of Assyria <laughs> was going to do. And so he would tell the king of Israel, don't go to this particular place because that's where the raiding bands are coming to. So the Syrian king got real upset. And uh, in, in, in reality, it said he was enraged uh, because none of his uh, raiding bands into Israel had profited anything. And he said, surely I have a spy in my midst. And uh, somebody spoke up and said, no, uh, there are no spies here. It's just the prophet, the prophet in Israel. There's a prophet in Israel. His name is Elisha. And he tells the king what we're going to do. He knows. Uh, so he's just laying on his bed over there in Israel, but he knows what's going on <laughs> here in Syria. Amen and amen. So the king Woo! of Syria sent a powerful army into Israel. He sent them into the city, to the city of Dothan. And, and this is not Alabama, uh, Jack. <laughs> this, this is Dothan, I Israel. And uh, uh, he surrounded, he sent in a powerful army, surrounded the city. He wanted to destroy the, the prophet. Okay, so the prophet's servant got up and he looked out early in the morning. And because at night, the soldiers had come, this great, powerful army had come and surrounded the city. And uh, the, the servant looked out and got very fearful because there was an army there to destroy him and Elisha. And so he uh, spoke to Elisha and said, there's this army, a powerful mm -hmm. army out there. They've come, they're surrounding mm -hmm. us. And Elisha said, well, don't be afraid. <laughs> that sounds a whole lot like Jesus. Don't be afraid. Amen. What you see Amen. In natural, uh, because fear not. You need, you need to look up. You're looking in the wrong place. Well, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good advice for each of us today. Uh, let's don't be looking at natural circumstances. Let's be looking up. Because Elisha said, don't be afraid. There are more for us than there are for them. Amen. And Amen. it's the same for you. There are more for you than there are for your enemies. Hallelujah. You look up. And so uh, Elisha prayed that God would open his eyes so that he could see uh, that there were chariots and horses uh, around them of angels, an army of angels around them. And there were more angels than there were uh, in this powerful army. And uh, so the point that's really important here is that there were two people, Elisha and his servant, and they had totally different perspective. One had a lower vision, just looked out there and saw the powerful army and thought, we're going to be killed. We're all going to be killed. We're going to be destroyed. Elisha, on the other hand, looked up and he saw uh, an army of angels. And there were more angels than there were soldiers natural soldiers amen, amen. and so uh, that's the way that's the core of the message then we need to look at the higher vision and how do we do it that's that's really the point i want to make tonight how do we do it and uh in the 
what happened then, Elisha came out and he prayed and asked God to strike this powerful army with blindness. Woo! Then, Glory. He, then he said, he went out to the army and he said, you've mm -hmm. come to the wrong place. I'll show you where you need to go. And so he led them on a hike 40 miles up to <laughs> Samaria. And uh, the king of Samaria comes out and surrounds these blind uh, soldiers. And, and uh, uh, Elisha prays again and asks God to give them their sight back. Now, uh, the king of Samaria, uh, the king in Samaria, which is the king of Israel, uh, said to Elisha, my father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? He really wanted to kill them all. But no, Elisha had captured them. And he said, if you had captured them with your sword, you wouldn't kill them. Uh, and so what I want you to do, because God gave them back their sight, feed them and give them something to drink and uh, send them on their way. So uh, it was a great feast. And that was really impressive to mm -hmm. me that the, the king of Israel gave them a great feast then and sent them on the way. And the point the final point I want to make from the story, and of course we'll be referring to it uh, throughout this time tonight, was that this army was intimidated. The king of Syria was intimidated by the prophet, and they never sent any more raiding bands uh, into the nation of Israel like they had. Now, that, they tried to do other things, but they didn't do that same thing again I believe that Elisha had intimidated them. If you take in a powerful army, turn them all to blindness, and then uh, march them 40 miles, uh, mm -hmm. that's a pretty intimidating uh, factor. Okay, so the bottom line, of course, of the message is we have to give our life, lay down our life. Mm -hmm. If you want to operate in a higher level of anointing and a higher level of the gifts of the Spirit, you have to lay down your life. Jesus said, uh, he who finds his life will lose it, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. he who uh, loses his life will find it for my right. sake. And so it's the lower life. We have to uh, lay down the lower life and pick up the higher life. Well, that's Christ within us. Um, Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20 that um, it's not I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me, for I'm crucified. I'm crucified, mm -hmm. but nevertheless I live. The life that I live, I live by the Faith nice. of the Son of God. So, okay, so we put down our natural life. Uh, Paul also wrote, "I crucify my, crucify myself daily, crucify the flesh daily." So we're taking up a higher life. But I have a, a video I want us to watch. It's just a minute and a half, and Sherry's my technician tonight. It's about Ooh. Catherine Kuhlman. Catherine Kuhlman um, was a very powerful. Uh, a minister of God, and she raised, uh, she had all kinds of healings uh, and miracles in her ministry, and she talks about the cost, and this is just a general uh, aspect of the cost, of the cost uh, uh, of an anointing of a ministry. If you're, you want to operate in a ministry, there's a cost, and she's going to tell us what it is, so we're going to let Sherry show us um, in, okay. Oh, oh, Sherry's doing really good here. And we're going to watch it. It costs much, but it's worth the cost. It costs everything. If you really want to know the price, if you really want to know the price, I'll tell you. It'll cost you everything. Catherine Kuhlman died a long time ago. I know the day, I know the hour, I can go to the spot where Catherine Kuhn died. But you see, for me, it was easy 
because I had nothing. I had nothing. I hope you could see and hear that video. Uh, could you could you see it and hear it? Yeah. Okay. I, I watched this video and that was made in 1974. This is this is a very powerful uh, minister, and, and she taught in a message that I saw years ago, and it still impacted my life. That it costs everything. You're going to have a ministry like she had and uh, great miracles were occurring in her uh, ministry all the time uh it, it was a phenomenal ministry and she's called one of the generals in, in god's army and I, I certainly believe she was but you see there um she realized there was a cost and she paid it and she knew the day and the hour and so that's that's easy to say. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do in the next part of this message, and it's not going to be long, and, and I'm not going to say a lot more, but I, I want to try to break it down into some components to help help all of us wrap our mind around what would it mean if we want to operate in a higher realm of anointing and gifts of the spirit. Uh, what are the some of the things that we can do? And I believe there are uh, about five that, that I really think are important, uh, four or five at least. And, and of course, there could be lots of others that we could discuss. But the first one is we have to identify, we have to know our identity in Christ. That's Amen. number one. Amen. See, if we're starting from a natural person, and, and just thinking about our experiences and our history and our body, biology and all of those things uh, that person's dead that's what she said that's what Catherine Kuhlman said she died there was a day and a time and an hour and a time she, and a time that she died and and so we can't start uh and and miss that particular step uh without uh, and get to the point we want to be and that is the cost of a higher vision the higher vision just like Elisha saw the angels, saw the army of angels, and there was more of them. And if you want greater anointing and greater gifts of the Spirit, the first thing you need to do is to see who you are in Christ. And, and I believe there are two really important elements here, and one is that you are an overcomer and a warrior. So you're a warrior Woo! and an overcomer. That means you're victorious. You're no Amen. longer a victim. Don't see yourself as a victim, but see yourself as victorious you are a warrior and an overcomer. That's who you are in Christ. Uh, that's really important. We, we need to know that we are not a victim and we're not uh, uh, some uh, poor worm uh, crawling on the earth and, and that we're just waiting on somebody to come by and stomp on us. No, <laughs> you are a warrior and an overcomer. And, and, and the second point I want to make is, is that you need to produce the fruit of the spirit because the fruit of the spirit mm. is going to overcome a lot of negative things, a lot of the negativity uh, that surrounds us that we observe in this world. And for example, Elisha said to his servant, do not be afraid. Well, how do we deal with fear? Perfect love casts Cast out, out fear. fear. Okay, so if you've got frustration, what? Well, how, how are you going to deal with frustration? Patience uh, and peace. And, and, and so it's the fruit of the spirit that's going to overcome these negative things. And, and so you've got to have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit in order to produce the fruit of the spirit. And, and so if there's some negative factor uh, attacking you, affecting you, then you look at what is the fruit that will overcome it, that will help you overcome any negativity. It can all be overcome by a close relationship with the Holy Spirit and focus. And so if you need love, uh, don't focus on uh, peace or joy, focus on love. And, and how do we get to, to love? Well, You've got to go out and see somebody. Yes, it's amen. easy to say, oh, I love, I love you. I love 
and just sit in your home or, uh, and not, not really do anything about it. If you are fearful, you need to get out and, and do something for somebody else. Show them some love. Uh, and I've told this story uh, over and over again, but Sherry and I uh, were very much self-centered in our lives, and we loved God, and we loved to go around to people that looked like us and, and acted like us. But we smelled didn't, like us. But we didn't know uh, that that type of love is a limited kind of love. We, we've got to reach out uh, to some other people, and uh, we've got to go out to where they are. Go out mm -hmm. to the hurting people. Mm -hmm. That's when you express love. That's when the Holy Spirit puts more love in your life. Yeah, you may have some love, but how much love do you have? It, you know, it says when our love is perfected, oh, Hallelujah. that's when we, are, we drive out fear. It's with perfect love. Uh, amen. It's amen. not a, a love that's uh, untested. It's a love mm. that has been tested and perfected. So the second point is we need a relationship with the Holy Spirit and operating with the Holy Spirit in our life so that we're producing the fruit of the Spirit. And of course, there are nine there. And this, this message is not to cover all of those, but all of those nine fruit are important. Mm -hmm. And that will help us overcome all negativity that comes against us. I've only talked about love, but if it's peace that you need, then focus on peace. Look at the scriptures. Um, mm. Look at the scriptures about peace. Uh, you know, Isaiah 26, 3 says he will keep, keep you, you in perfect, perfect peace, peace whose mind, mind is stayed on the Lord. Lord. Amen. He will keep you in perfect. Okay, so we've got to put our mind on the Lord. We've got to look up. Remember, Noah looked up. Yes. He, he, he couldn't look out on the water. He couldn't look out on the land. He couldn't look out on the people. He could only look up. And I think that's a helpful way, a way to help us uh, have a higher vision. What's the cost of the higher vision? We've got to have limited uh, exposure to the, the things oh, of this world. Wow, wow. Write that down. Limited, limited exposure, exposure to the, to the things, things of, the of world. this world. Put focus on the things above. Just Amen. like Noah looked up. Just like Elisha looked up and saw the army of angels around him. He wasn't fearful. He knew there was more for them, uh, for he and his servant, than there were for that powerful army. Mm. I, I tell you, it was horses and chariots of fire. Oh, Hallelujah, that he saw. That he saw. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're available to you. You can see them too. If you're looking up, Glory to God. Little baby Aiden is seeing angels. Yeah. That's what they said. Amen. Number three is you have to have a warrior mindset. Yes. We have to lay down our life and pick up a higher life. But we, when we sacrifice our life, he renews our mind. And, and we find out mm. his perfect will. Mm. Mm. And, and that's mm. really important to know that we're not a worm. Jesus became a worm. In uh, Psalm 22, he called himself a worm uh, prophetically because all of his uh, blood was going to be squeezed out of him. Uh, the, the particular word was a, a worm that was, uh, they went, the people went out over Israel and they looked for this particular worm that had a red uh a fluid in it and they would take that worm and they would squeeze it and and create a dye for cloth a red cloth and and prophetically jesus was saying i am that worm all my blood's going to be squeezed out of me and i'm going to make many kings mm, mm, and priests mm, mm, mm. Uh, but you and i are not a worm hallelujah no. it, jesus became that worm his blood was squeezed out so we could become the king and we could have garments washed in his blood. Hallelujah. Okay, so Hallelujah. we've got to have a warrior mentality. If you've been around Sherry for very long, 
because she'll show you what a warrior mentality <laughs> is. She's not afraid of anything. And she's not going to back up and say, oh, well, we missed it here. We, we didn't go right here. We're going to move forward because we're going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That, that's number uh, three, that we have to have that warrior mentality. No longer mm -hmm. are you the victim. No longer are, are you subject to the, the whims of this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are victorious in Christ Jesus. Now, Hallelujah. thanks be unto God, to God who always, always causes, causes us to triumph, triumph in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. So that's the number three point. I'm, I, I'm breaking down this idea about how can we live this victorious life? Uh, what's the cost? Well, we're going to have to do some things. And rather than just me leave you and say, well, you need to give it all. Or like Catherine Kuhlman said, it costs everything. But I'm trying to break it down into components. Uh, you need to know your identity in Christ. That's number one. Mm -hmm. You need to operate in the fruit the of the spirit. spirit, not just at a at a meager stage a little bit, but I'm talking about full uh, and full fruit, fully fruitful oh, in all of your life, in every you. aspect of your life, and all of the fruit. Amen. Of the amen. amen. And number amen. three, you have to have the mentality of the warrior. And, and number four, and I really like this concept, it's it, it's intimidation. You need mm -hmm. to intimidate, intimidate the enemy. You need to intimidate the enemy. That's Hallelujah. What, that's what <laughs> he intimidates. See, if you're a that's warrior, what Becky and I do. If you are have a warrior mentality, you need to be intimidating uh the enemy. Glory to God. That's what Elisha did. They kept sending these uh, uh raiding bands into his nation, and he rose up and struck the powerful army down with. Blindness, with blindness and and put them on a 40 mile march uh glory to god that's pretty intimidating amen <laughs> amen he just said oh you've come to the wrong place but i'll show you a place you need to go <laughs> Hallelujah. So, took him up there to the king of israel took that powerful army yeah. surrounded them by with the uh, israel's army and, and then asked god to give them a uh, sight and yes. then to for to feed the them. king of Israel to feed them and gave them a great feast. So Amen. intimidate them. You need to intimidate uh, your enemy. And you know, that's what uh, Ephesians 3.10 says. It gives you a license to intimidate uh, the enemy. It says that by the grace of God, you're to show the wisdom of God, the multifaceted wisdom of God, uh, make it known to the principalities and powers, powers. and, and mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Amen. That's your license uh, to yeah. intimidate the enemy. Woo! That's what the church is supposed to do. It's supposed to be intimidating the enemy. Do you have... Instead of the other way around. Have you been seeing the church intimidate the enemy? Well, that's your role. That's your responsibility you have a license to intimidate the uh, enemy. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Ooh, yeah, this is the cause. Lord. We're going to read some verses here. I'm going to ask Sherry to read Hebrews 13, verses 15 uh, through 16. And go ahead and read the, uh, verse 15 first, and then we'll stop. Through him, and this is from the Amplified Bible. Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Okay. What oh, I want yeah. you to see here is there are three sacrifices that we're supposed to make in these two verses. Three sacrifices. The first one is praise. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said something about praise uh, in Matthew 21, verse 16, he said, out of the mouth of infants and, and uh, uh, nursing, nursing uh, uh, children, uh, he has perfected praise. Okay, look at that concept now. Perfect praise. Hallelujah. Uh, that's all out praise. That's Amen. all out worship. Amen. Uh, and, and that verse is connected to Psalm 8, uh, verse 2, because there he said, 
and starts the same way, but Jesus just changed the words a little bit to give us greater clarification. And eight, in Psalm 8, verse 2, it says, out of the mouth of infants and nursing uh, infants, out of the mouth of, of babes and nursing infants, mm -hmm. uh, if something comes out of that, out of them, to silence the enemy. Hallelujah! So what Jesus said, that it's the perfect praise that silence is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to intimidate the enemy is for your worship and praise to go up into such a high level and, and you totally sell out in your praise and worship to glorify God amen, amen. and to lift him up. And that will silence the enemy. Maybe the enemy's been uh, coming at you even in the night seasons and, and telling mm -hmm. you you've got this big problem and your problems are increasing and, and trying to make you think that your situation is hopeless and you don't uh, have uh, anything that you can do about it. What you need to do is praise and worship the Lord. Amen. When you praise and worship the Lord, you will intimidate, you will intimidate your enemies. Glory to God. And by your enemies, I mean the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what Paul said. That's the warfare that we have. We are involved in a war. We are involved in a war. All right, Sherry has something she wants. It says to say. the garment, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so if any of you have had some, some heaviness uh, come upon you from the enemy, because the Lord does not put heaviness on you. He doesn't have any heaviness, but so it's the enemy that puts burdens on us, heaviness, depression, anxiety, stress, panic attacks, any of that garbage. Uh, then it says to put on the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. And I guarantee you when you do that, because I've done it, when you do that, it will lift off of you. Uh, because that praise is powerful, uh, and it uh, the Lord comes down and inhabits uh, the praises of His people, and and so uh, I just wanted to to share that scripture with you. Okay, see, this is real important. You have a right and a responsibility to intimidate the enemy. By that I mean the principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places that Paul wrote about in Ephesians 6, because we are in a warfare, and that's who we're in a war with. We're in war with. Not and, with flesh and blood. Not flesh and blood. And you have a license uh, in Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 10, that you are to intimidate the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, rulers of spiritual wickedness in high places. You have a license to intimidate them. And I hope from this day forth that they you'll know how to do it. You have to do it with praise and worship. Amen. Now we're going to do it because we're talking about cost. How, what is the cost to go to a higher level in, in anointing and the gifts of the spirit? And so the first sacrifice we're talking about here in Hebrews uh, 13 verses 15 and 16 is praise. Amen. Amen. Praise and worship, thanksgiving. Now we're going to go to two other ones in uh, verse 16. It says, do not neglect to do good, to contribute to the needy of the church as an expression of fellowship. For such sacrifices are always pleasing to God. Now, I'm going to ask Sherry to read this same verse, verse 16, out of the Young's literal translation. Read it out of that, please. It says, and, and of doing good, and of fellowship, be not forgetful, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So these two verses have listed three sacrifices. That's a cost. A sacrifice is a cost. Right. And, and you know, David said, I, I'm not going to make a sacrifice that doesn't cost me anything. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a sacrifice, it needs to cost you something. First one is praise and worship. Second one is doing good. And the third one is fellowshipping. Oh, hallelujah. Now, a lot of people just like to stay in their home. And then maybe on Sunday, they, they go to a congregation. They sneak in the back door and and uh, stay on the last pew. And then at the end, <laughs> they, 
they sneak out again. That, that's not fellowship. That, that, that's ritual. That's not fellowship. That's fellowship. right. That's but religion. You, you've got to have a sacrifice of fellowship. You need to be close enough to people that you're fellowshipping with them. You want to go to a higher level uh, in, in the things of God, then you've got to make some sacrifices. There are some costs and the cost of praise and worship. I'm talking mm -hmm. about a real praise and worship. I'm not talking about just singing a song. I'm right. pra I mean, talking about praise and worship because God is looking for true worshipers. That's who he's looking for. And, and then doing good. That's number two. Yeah, That's the number yeah, two sacrifice. Yeah. Number three sacrifice is fellowship. Spend some time and effort in fellowshipping. There's some people out there hurting. There are people that you know that are hurting and they need fellowship. They need somebody to encourage them. Okay, I've covered four points, and I want to come down to a fifth and final point I, I want to talk about how to, to move to this higher level. What's the cost? And, and that is to help other people fulfill their vision. If you've got a vision and, and you want to go to a higher level in the uh -huh. things of God, one of the things that you can do is to help other people fulfill their, their vision. Their vision. So I, I believe this is a word for today for amen, all of us amen amen and if you get nothing out of it other than this your role and responsibility is to be so close to god so looking at god so closely that you're intimidating the, the enemies. enemies hallelujah i'm going to turn it over to Sherry. hallelujah hallelujah i want to go 